Who are your personal heroes in the industry? Jay, well, that's a really, really easy one for me. I joined the Scotch whisky industry back in 1986. I already had a number of heroes in the industry. So for me, that's a pretty easy one. Well, I must say that I've been very lucky. I've been, uh, I've been mentored by really people who are really my gurus. I've got a few personal heroes, but not necessarily connected to the whiskey industry specifically. First and foremost, I think the heroes to me are the men and women that work at our distillery. My personal heroes would have to be Jerry Edwards and Alan Smith. I learned a lot being an apprentice under Alan Smith specifically and the short tenure I would have had with Jerry Edwards before he retired. So they definitely taught me a lot and I look up to them. The person um, in the industry that um, I most admire is Fritz Maytag. He was truly motivated and driven by things that inspired him and, and he also had the conviction and, and the courage to, to see them through and wasn't intimidated by tackling things that weren't popular. He wasn't really looking for products that filled a niche. He very much honored um, traditional production techniques but he was um, always willing to make changes if it would result in a better product. This shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone who knows me, knows Woodford Reserve, and knows our master distiller, Chris Morris. He is an absolute legend and genius in the bourbon industry. You can't find, or I have not found someone that I hold in higher regard than him and his genius to the spirits industry and what he has done to influence and impact this industry from legislatively and working with the Kentucky Distillers Association, also honoring the history and the heritage of our industry. He's somebody that um, continues to learn and to grow and he's taught that to me. Yeah, so cheers to you, Chris Morris. My boss, Billy Lighton, will be one of my, my heroes. You know, he's been around in the whiskey industry longer than I've actually been alive. So he has a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience in what he does. So to be able to work side by side with him, you know, I'm learning pretty much every day by someone who I would have looked up to years ago working at the Milton Distillery, but not in, in a blending capacity. So um, he'd be one of the all time heroes of mine. I was very lucky to stumble across a job for my chemistry degree at the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute. My boss there, um, who employed me, was the late, great Dr. Jim Swan. Renowned throughout the industry, revered for his expertise. And, you know, I called him the Albert Einstein of whiskey. I worked with him in the maturation blending department of Scotch Whiskey Research Institute. And he used his nose, his senses, his chemistry to understand everything better. I learned a hell of a lot from him. As a master blender, I know I get out there and do the public relations side of the business, but your whiskey is only as good as the people that make it. We got the best and brightest people working for us. Externally, I think one of the people that have helped me quite a bit, especially when I started out as a young blender, is Handy Hislop, a master blender for Chivas Brothers. I found his as inspirational on how he manages his whiskey, the styles that he makes, and the public relations side that he does. He's been very helpful and I always will look up to Sandy. The ones that spring to mind are the legendary Richard Patterson of White and Mackay and David Stewart of William Grants. And not only did I get the opportunity to meet two of my heroes, I've also been fortunate enough to be able to work with these gentlemen. The other person I need to mention here is Dr. Jim Beveridge, the master blender for Johnny Walker, because Jim was actually one of my mentors when I first joined the industry. So I've got a lot to thank him for too. My grandfather is very important. He's somebody who really taught me the wealth is in the land. You don't own a vineyard, you, you, you tend a vineyard. Uh, you know, to extract the essence of things by great distillation. My grandfather is definitely somebody who is, you know, part of who I am right now. In the rum world, I have really two gurus, people who really made, helped me make plantation, what plantation rum is. Unfortunately, both have passed away. Uh, Nora Barnard was someone who opened the doors of the Caribbeans for me. A master distiller, master blender at St. Lucia Distillers. Wonderful, incredible man. Thierry Gardet, who is one of the first gentlemen who purchased our cognac uh, barrels in his distillery. Thierry Gardet, you might know, is, uh, was the owner 
of uh, Barbancourt Distillery in Haiti. So these three men come to Maine as my heroes. There's a couple of individuals that have really expanded my mind when it comes to how we can relate to agriculture. Uh, one of those people would be Dr. Steve Jones, who heads up uh, the bread lab at Washington State University in Mount Vernon, uh, which is where we're doing a lot of research on barley varietals, focusing on flavor development and sustainability. Working with them is, is an amazing thing, be able to see the future of agriculture here in Washington State. I would also say that I've been super influenced by Dan Barber, who's a chef out of New York, who has a restaurant uh, called Blue Hill, two restaurants in fact, and the way that he approaches food and its connection to agriculture is something that's been very inspiring to me and to everybody here at Westland.